All right, welcome back to Kevin McCain Studios and Idaho Art Classes. So today we're going to talk about how to draw the human skull. And so um, we're going to be drawing this guy. Um, for those of you in my class, I'm going to send you some photographs. Uh, because of the fact that we're on this short focal length, this skull is highly distorted because of the photography. Uh, you can barely see anything on the you know, past the temporalis over here on the side of the head, that side of the head. Uh, and we'll be, see, we'll be able to see more of that with a longer focal length on the camera, uh, which will be more like how we'd see it naturally looking at this thing. Uh, it's also really close to the camera, so that's another part of it. So this is just a, this is just a little skull that uh, you bought online. It's one of these ones that's, you know, cast from a, an actual skull, but it's plastic. Um, and it does have, you know, it's, it's, you can't use this for like an anatomy physiology class. It just didn't have, you know, everything and, and all the different bones and, and some of the different depressions and things just aren't clear, clear enough to use it for that. But for drawing, um, this is a nice, you know, piece to use. Uh, and it's a nice segue into drawing the portrait because of course, you know, a portrait is just skin and and muscle stretched over the you know the anatomy of the bones and stuff like that and so we're going to talk a little bit about how to draw this skull um, we're going to be using a a method now whenever you use a method like whether it's drawing a head or a portrait or when you talk about you know Riley method or Loomis method these are just methods to get you close they approximate the natural proportions found uh, in the human face but it's still a generic human face, and everyone has slight differences and idiosyncrasies. Um, the one thing we want to remember with the skull is that if we turn this thing to the profile, that except for the, the well, even past the nasal bone. Now, of course, the nasal bone, we have a nose out here, but in terms of structurally, the thing that's out in front of even the nose is actually the muzzle, the teeth, and they're in front of the chin. And so, you know, sometimes you'll have some people that put this witch's chin on people and it protrudes too far because everything is behind the teeth and of course over the teeth of the lips. Now when you add a nose on there because again there's going to be flesh and cartilage and all this sort of stuff on here and muscles, uh, well then of course, you know, the nose is going to project out further. But in terms of brow to nasal bone, to chin, to the teeth, the teeth is actually the furthest out. And the, the uh, you can actually put a half arc around the head, uh, uh, you know, half a circle, and it will line up with that head. Um, but we're gonna talk about, you know, again, drawing this again. Remember that the teeth are out in front, the frontal bone, or in other words, the uh, forehead, uh, it's gonna be, behind the teeth and we're going to look for the three ar um, three arches uh, we've got well actually four arches if we get into that we got the arch of the forehead that's in line with the arch of the zygomatic or the cheekbone then we have the arch through the teeth and the arch through the chin all right and I always reverse I always get these mixed up but you have the mandible and the maxilla or is, or is this the man? Well, I, anyways, but you have through the teeth, through the chin, through the cheekbone, and through the forehead. Those are the four arches that we're looking for on the, on the skull. Uh, and notice that, you know, from the side, the skull very much has an egg. From the profile, there's very much this egg shape happening on the skull. As we turn this forward, like this, it becomes very circular so that you know that just you know it's it's wider than it is high uh, but we're gonna look for that when we're drawing the portrait this will lead our lead into drawing the portrait now some of the other things we want to understand when we're drawing this skull is that we've got the full the full eye holes or ocular cavities um, normal heads are gonna be measured in eye spaces but that does this doesn't have eyes well, the eyeballs are not in here and the flesh is not wrapped over the eyeball. So we're going to be using a slightly different proportion for the skull. But something that is, so instead of using five eye spaces, we're going to 
we're going to use a little different proportion for the, for the for the eye holes. Uh, and of course, again, you could always measure. You know, what what is the measurement of this? You know, to the measurement of that. What's the measurement of this to that? And you can and certainly you can measure this and, and measure down. Um, so you can always take measurements to double check things. Um, one thing that's clear is that we start, when we start a skull, we start from the top of the forehead. Not the top of the head, but what we call the top of the forehead, which is, you know, right here. It's about where the hairline is. And the interesting thing is if we take from there to the brow, which right here is the brow. Um, so if we take a measurement from the brow to the top of that forehead, and then from the brow down that's going to line up into the to the bottom of the nose and if we take that again basically you're going to end up with equal thirds now that's not from the top of the head that's from the top of the forehead so we're going to we're going to use the equal thirds for the skull uh, if we take and we set this so that you actually can see it kind of the way uh, I'd be looking at it and if we take from the brow down to here the bottom of the the bottom of the eye socket is about halfway from here to there just about and if we took the 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 cheekbone it's just barely above the bottom of the nose we're going to really start to look for some of these um, some of these relationships and then you know if we look at how wide the um, what we sometimes call the tooth cylinder and even where it connects up here into the the jaw connects you know just you know just in front of the ear uh, what you have you have that this is of course thinner the cheekbone is the widest part is what is what I'm getting at uh, in terms of the front of this uh, of this of this skull there's a part at which it almost is as wide as the but even the head back here isn't quite as wide as the cheekbone at the widest part so we're going to look for that, that this piece down here should be not as wide as the cheekbones. The cheekbones are the, wi cheekbones are the widest part, and I'll just put my hand in front of there, but there we go. Cheekbones are the widest part of the skull. Um, also remember that if it wasn't for this spring, this bottom uh, chin would come right off. Out. You could just take that right off. Uh, and, you know, when back in the day, you know, you, you know, when... People would find, you know, the jaw would separate, you know, as, as, you know, as we deteriorate once we die, this piece comes off because they're not attached. So these are very, two very separate, separate pieces. And we just want to, we want to remember that, that the only thing that holds us on is, is, is muscle and, uh, you know, and, and, and things like that. Um, and so we have the, you know, this part, the cranium and the front part with the nose and the eye sockets and the upper teeth. And then the lower teeth and the jaw, of course, would is a separate piece. And we can see right here, right there, that's, you know, where that touches. Oh, we lost a tooth. So I'll put that back in a minute. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna show you how to draw the skull and a proportion that we're gonna use, or a um, as the mannequin, as some people might call it, but drawing the skull from the front, how we're gonna how we're gonna accomplish that. All right, so let's go ahead and put this guy aside, and then we'll get to it. All right, let's get to drawing this skull thing. Now, I've noticed on some of the other videos, I, when I was sketching pencil, it, it looks even much lighter on the camera than, than, than what it does to me when I'm drawing. So I'm going to try to, to draw a little bit darker than I normally would, even more so than I, I've, I've tried to do, so that we're a little bit more clear about what's going on but whenever we're drawing a skull we're gonna go ahead and start with so from the front I talked to you about how we can see very much the circle of the cranium so we're gonna start with a circle now again this dovetails into the the Riley system and the and the Loomis system. There's different ways of drawing skulls. This is just one of many. Uh, you had 
you know, people from the Renaissance had their ways of doing it. Some are very mathematical. Some are developing it from the, um, well, I guess we could go ahead and maybe make this a little bit darker. So I'm grabbing an AB just to show my starting point for this circle. So here's my little circle that I'm starting with, like so. Okay. Oh. Okay. So there's my circle. Um. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide this in half. So. Go ahead and just, now if I wanted to, I could put this into a, uh, into a, uh, a square. And if it's uh, truly a, a circle, it should fit right with inside a square. This will then be the side here. This will be the side here. And we're just going to double check it to make sure that it is in the middle so pretty close what I did was I measured I, I first marked here and then I measured over here no actually I made this mark first and then I measured from here to this first point okay which is I measure I've got you can't probably can't see I measured to this point here and then we came over and I said well look that's off so I backed that off and I marked this which was how much I was off and I split the difference and that should be right in the middle because I said all right that's my first guess and then I brought it over and I said nope that's off so let's bring it back so it lines up and then I said all right well this is so this was my first point and then I measured from using this distance I measured that distance and it came back to here and then I just split that in half and that should be the exact middle so again even if my guesstimations are off there's ways of correcting it. Now, I could also, you know, put the thing in, again in a square. I could use armature of a rectangle, all that good stuff. Never a bad idea to use the armature of the rectangle to go ahead and start this off. But let's say that this right here is my, um, is my center line. Okay. And let's just go ahead and make this good and straight so we can see it why not okay so this is my center line alright now what I'm gonna do is sometimes people would divide this up into fourths you know from the midpoint up divide that into four from the midpoint down divide that into four so it's in eighths and some people will come down one eighth of the way with Loomis which is the one I prefer again most of the, both of these are are again just methods to help us along neither one of them are exact they're both just pretty close it's just I like I like Loomis is better and uh, what he does instead of dividing it into eighths and then dropping down an eighth he does he divides this into thirds so take this and divide this into thirds now you can eyeball it and then double check with your you know very quickly to see if that eyeballing was actually right and um, so you could certainly do that. Um, I think I just I think I just checked this, and this isn't exactly right. So let's take this this middle one, which I think is probably closer. <clears throat> from actually doing the measuring. Yeah. Okay. So this will be. <clears throat> pardon me, my thirds. And these are thirds from the halfway point. Divide this into thirds. And if this is again, now again, I could use any spare piece of paper. Um, any spare piece of paper to do this. I can go ahead and go, let's see. Take that one third increment and instead of, and then just repeat it. It's just, you know, save yourself some time. Why, why wouldn't you? Um, so we can again divide this up. 
And so I've divided this up into <laughs> cute little thing of all the all the videos I should do. A uh, little note and reminder to myself. Um, but now I've got this divided into six. Three from the three from here up, three, three down. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we divide this into six. Now what I'm going to do is I'll just go. Now again, some people would just might go. Ah, oh, I'm going to guesstimate. Where's the top of the head? Uh, I like I like this, and we'll use this for the Loomis method as well. So again, we could go ahead, and what we'll do is we're going to take one third of the way down, and this right here will be the top of the forehead, or what normally would be the hairline. Okay. So again, it was you know the top of the top of the forehead right up here. Had to refocus that because I don't think it was in focus. Uh, I think it was focused on the skull out here and not down here where we're working. So this is the hairline. We'll just put H for hairline. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go, okay, well, that's the hairline. And then we're going to come down to the midpoint. This is the middle line. Okay. And for this middle line, this right here, All right, make that nice and make this nice and straight too. Why not? I mean, what the heck? Um, whoops, got 16 lines going through there, and I missed it. But we know where it is. It's right where that dot is. Um, this will be the uh, this will be the brow line, okay? And then we're gonna and remember that from the hairline. <laughs> for this H or hairline to the brow, that's the same distance from the brow down to the bottom of the nose. So this is two of those sixths, or in other words, this is one third. And then we're going to come down another one, two. This is also one third. And we'd come through there, and this will be the nose line. Okay. So we've got this right here is going to be our nose line. All right. Now we need to get to the chin. Now we said that from the hair to the brow line and from the brow line to the nose line and front is they're they're pretty even thirds. So we're going to take this distance right here. Got to make use of these bill envelopes for you know somehow because who actually uses them? I mean really. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take that distance, which is one third, and we're going to bring it down again. Okay. So through here, this is going to be the bottom of the chin line. Okay. So we'll go ahead and line this up, and this is going to be the bottom of the chin. Okay. So in the Renaissance and the way we're doing it, we they divide things into thirds. So this and this and this should be even thirds. Thirds. Uh, and so we came one sixth of the way down because again we divided this into six. We came down one sixth and then we came down to one two. Two six making one third. Came down another one two. Okay. That's another third that left one sixth here, and we came down another sixth, if you will, to give us even thirds. So this is one third, this is one third, and that's one third. Okay. So we have even thirds on this. So now we're actually going to get into this and start dealing with the uh, with the skull. Uh, and the first thing is is that the sides of the skull get a little flatter now. It may be hard to see it on this one, but hopefully we can see that it's a little rounder up here and a little bit flatter over here. So, and again, anyone who's seen the uh, Loomis method, they, they'll, they'll cut the, first what they'll do is they'll cut off. Like this is supposed to, you're supposed to think of this like a, you know, you can think of it like a, a dough ball, if you will, uh, and you're and you're cutting off the uh, the side of that dough ball. Um, now it's not completely straight like this, so it's going to be. Um, actually, I brought this in, but it's going to be 
a little flatter. It's, it's not going to be quite that round. It's going to be something a little bit, a little bit, uh, the roundness is a little flatter than a full circle. So we'd go ahead, bring this around. And again, I should have put this line where it touches the circle. So it, it's, it's close, but it's, it's not perfect. We'll just say that. Um, so again, we're just cutting off this little bit here because the side of the head just is not quite that round. Now this is the brow line. Now again, the brow line is right here. It's above what's called the glabella. The glabella comes up off the nasal bone and transitions up onto the brow. And this right here is the brow, okay? But if we take this brow over, it's, you know, the, the top of the brow is gonna, is gonna align with the top of the ocular cavity. But when we're drawing somebody with an eyebrow, the eyebrow actually runs on top of it. So the eyebrow is actually a little bit above the brow, but for the skull, it actually aligns with the, with the cavity of the eyes. Let's go ahead and we're going to take this right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a, and, and do a little trick. Well, I don't know if it's a trick, but we're going to go ahead and divide. Um, And again, th this is just a, uh, this is, is just, um, again, we call this the mannequin. It's generalized increments. It's, it's generalized ideas. And so again, everyone, everyone's going to have a slightly different, uh, slightly different portion, but we're going to go ahead and divide this in half and then half again. So we're going to get you know, one, two, three, four over here. And then we're going to take this. We're going to make sure we're, we're symmetrical still after I slice this. Let's just make sure we're still symmetrical. Pretty close. Not exact. So we're going to mark that's So it pushes out by maybe less than a 32nd of an inch. But then we're going to take this again. And we're going to divide it in half and then into quarters. That's off. So let's go ahead and get this a little closer. Try that again. Now, if I was doing a rapid sketch, obviously I wouldn't have the time to be this meticulous. Uh, you might be like, ah, it's close enough. I got, you know, seven minutes to do this sketch. I can't dilly dally. I can't, you know, and so it, it makes, there's a time where in, you know, I'd be like, hey, okay, we need to be approximating this. And I don't have time to sit here and really, you know, agonize over it. But if I'm, if I was doing a, a drawing that I plan to take a good eight hours on or something, you know, a solid amount of time, well, then take your time. But if you've got, you know, 20 minutes to do a drawing, obviously you're going to have to, you know, get at it. And that just means you're going to have a little bit more error. Um, but here's the thing. Now, again, you could, you can measure this to make sure we're in the right place. Now this is, um, again, we're going to, we're going to take the, um, if we cut this in half, now this is already half. Our ocular cavity is between the half and the third. This right here is probably about, uh, two thirds. And again, if I, if I was, you know, wanted to, I could measure this and go, that's one, that's two. Actually, it's a little beyond. That's probably about right there. It's, it's closer. So again, we'd say, all right, well, what's, is that, you know, that's one, that's two, you know. Um, so this is about, going to be about two thirds. So the, the eye cavity stops somewhere between the half and the two thirds. Sometimes it'll rest pretty close to the two thirds. So... What we're going to do is we're going to, of these four here, we're going to use two of them. Okay. We're going to bring this across here and we're going to divide this. Also, we're going to use two of these. So this gives us a quarter on either side and it gives us three even spaces. Well, there's something we need to understand and that is that the space between the eye cavities 
is it's 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 skinnier here okay and it's skinnier by you know some people will say well you'll take a third of that uh and that's i think a little bit beefy i think it's a little bit too much but if you take this this should be about you know almost three quarters of that so maybe that's fine let's go ahead and make sure that i've got this on either side Okay. Um, but the way to know is, so right now, and again, this is just a guesstimation. And so here's what I've got. If I take this and I said, all right, well, this is about, you know, about three quarters of that. Cause this is now my full eye space. I, I made it bigger. That's my full eye space. Well, your eye space is actually a little bit taller than, than uh, it's not a square. It's actually a little bit, so if I had a square over here, the eye cavity, instead of being a true square, it's actually a little bit taller. Now this is close to being a square, but this is taller. This one's actually wider, which tells us, oh yeah, well, it's a little bit wide. So here's what I normally do. I'll still use the eight, I'll, I'll, I'll then shrink this down. We shrunk this down because the space between the two ocular cavities is skinnier than the width. But now, once we open this up, we're gonna take just about the same distance here and we're gonna subtract it off there. And now we're gonna end up with, you know, something that's pretty close to being a square to something that's a little bit more of a stretch, stretch square. Okay, so I went ahead and moved in the sides of this ocular cavity. Okay, so this right here is now going to be the eye. Now, the reason I'm using this square is because we'll, we'll know in a, a reason why in a second. But I'm going to sometimes it's easy to get lost in all this, so I'll just go ahead and color that in so that it's easier to keep, you know, keep track of it. Now, in terms of the nose, we're going to put the nose cavity down second. And the nose cavity usually, again, so this is usually starts either at the halfway or just below it. Again, depending on the person you're drawing. And, well, pardon me. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, but yeah, no, it's at the half or above the half. Sorry. But anyways, so... Um, and sometimes we'll have this, like I'm, I'm taking a look at this again. This is just a, uh, again, this is just to get us, you know, close to the right place, so to speak. And again, this is, is going to be, it's not, it's not uncommon for this nose to go slightly below that line, but if it does, you add the same amount to the chin. Okay. So again, by, by, you know, looking at the, at the skull, you're going to start to go, Hmm. This is doing that and that's doing this and and you're going to start to modify stuff a little bit and that's okay. The nose is kind of a little bit of like an upside, upside down heart uh, as far as that goes. So we're going to put this nose in here. Again, you might say, wait a minute, it looks like it's touching the eyes. It certainly does look like it's touching the eyes. Uh, but the thing is, is when we get done modifying, modifying our... Uh, Modifying our, our, our uh, the ocular cavity, it won't touch. So that's okay for now. Now remember, this is actually now the side of the head. This right here is actually the side of my of my skull, right through here, which is what we want. That's a little flatter, but it still has a little bit of roundness to it. And we're going to deal with the. Um, The cheekbones. Now the cheekbones are just above the bottom of this. So I actually will think I'll use just about this line. For the cheekbones, you have the you know your your temple or your temporal bone. Uh, been a while since my anatomy class, but I believe it's temporalis, but don't quote me on that one. 
but you're going to get this little arc that comes out. And if that arc as it comes out, and we're just going to do some landmarks here. This is going to come out beyond the side of the head slightly. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and use what looks like you know, sort of a sweeping motion. This to come out and we're going to block it off. It looks like sort of a backwards, a little J almost with a, with a, or, or something of that, of that nature. Um, so that, this will be the, um, the ocular, or pardon me, the, the cheekbone. And then about halfway from the, down the eye, the middle of the eye, this is where the cheekbone actually comes in and attaches onto the, onto the mandible. Okay, there's a point at which we'll actually make this into an S-curve. Um, start at the halfway point. Halfway through it is, is where you, you get the S. So, and normally I would flip this upside down because I'm left-handed so I can see this side while I draw that side. So I'm drawing a little blind. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so I can see a little bit more. Uh, so, you know, I'm only doing this because we're drawing uh, for a, a video. If this was my own drawing, I could, I could flip this around as needed and stuff. Um, so we're actually going to take this point here and to the bottom here because we modified this, right? So we're going to take this and, and mark the halfway point, which should be somewhere about right there. I'm going to go ahead and double check that. Um, so if this is, if that's the halfway point. And I'm going to grab my little, my little helper. This is even more accurate. Why wouldn't I use it? So again, if I said this to there is halfway, and then I wanted to measure from this point to there, and it's not, you know, this was my new halfway point. Go ahead and, and, and mark the, where the, where they overlap and then cut that in half. And then this now should be, should be my new halfway point. And that one is. So this right here will be my halfway point right there. Let's go ahead and lighten the others so they don't get in my way. Remember we dropped the chin because I had to drop the nose a little bit. So this will be where to go right there okay double checking it's like when you're doing carpentry measure twice cut once so again we, we have this and we cut this then we check this and go hey what if i cut this in half again so we'd say all right well this right here again we cut this uh in half and we could check if that's actually the same it's pretty close so we're gonna go ahead and bring this so we're cutting this and dividing this into fourths so this is the first fourth, this is our halfway point, our second fourth halfway point. This is our third fourth, right? And the reason we're looking for this is because this is where we're going to have some of the, it gives us some landmarks. Um, so usually the top of the teeth go through the halfway point or pretty close. And so this will come down here. Now this will be usually the, the tooth bed. And the tooth bit is a cylinder, so this is going to curve back on itself because, again, it's, it's, it's round. It's, a, it's cylindrical. Hence the word tooth cylinder. Um, in fact, a lot of times, because of the way the bone looks, it almost seems like there's an arc and then there's an opposing arc, and then you have the teeth. And what it, it, it starts to look like a, uh, like a, like a smiley face. There's there's an old expression, the smile of death. Uh, and it, it comes from that. It comes from the way the skull looks. You know, when it's uh, the natural way the teeth set into the skull. Um, so, again, you got this, this cylinder through here for the, for the front teeth. And again, we could divide these up. And, you know, you'd say, well, okay, well, I've got, you know, whatever, seven teeth on on either side if I don't have my wisdom teeth. So you could start to div you know divide this you know into one, two, three, four, divide that in half five, six, 
and this is really going to compress. So as it goes around, the teeth overlap more and more and more as it goes around the corner. And of course, at some point, we could come back and actually design these into being really cool looking teeth. For right now, we're just trying to divide up the incisors and the bicuspids and the molars and all that good stuff. Uh, for those that are, you know, know their, their, uh, the anatomy of the teeth, the dentistry and all that good stuff. Um, and again, this is the bottom teeth. Now, and then we have the, the chin. Now we have a smaller chin usually when we're, and again, sometimes if we have to break outside of this just a little bit, usually you'll be fine. But you have a little bit smaller chin um, because it's just the bone. And usually these teeth, the bottom teeth are going back into perspective. So usually though, if you're seeing it from above, which is usually how we're looking at the, at these teeth. And so um, these teeth, once again, they'll be a little shorter. So again, we can go ahead and, and you know, connect these, uh, these two teeth here. This would be the tooth bed. Tooth bed comes down and, and, and kicks back and then into the, into the chin a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we have to connect the, uh, the chin and we're going to, or, you know, the, the jaw. And so the jaw comes down a little bit. So this jaw comes, you know, this is the side of the head. The jaw is, you know, it's continuing, it drops down from this. So we have this arc going through. It's going to be dropping down from there. And then we're going to come around. There's going to be a little notch through here sometimes, depending on, again, the person, uh, how, 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 well, this actually should be up a little bit, um, you know, where they're from and, uh, you know, where they're born and, and ethnicity and things like that can sometimes uh, affect, you know, heritage and all that good stuff uh, can start to affect little new, you know, little notches, how, how deep it'll be, how, how soft it might be, how distinct it might be, you know. Um, and again, even the, even the, uh, the, the skull, there's some skulls that are, um, that are, uh, why, uh, the width to height are different. So some skulls are a little more round and other skulls are a little less round. And again, you, you look for that. Whenever you're drawing, look for these, these features uh, as far as that goes. This is actually the bone where, again, I believe it's the masseter. It's been so long since I've done, I've got to get my anatomy books and start brushing back up on it. But it's the muscle that comes down through here attaches to this and it comes up through the zygomatic and attaches to the up here I believe onto the head. Pretty cool stuff when you start looking at, at the amazing engineering that's that ha that the makes the human body and and even you know other animals and stuff like that, you know, mammals and things. It's fascinating how the how the muscles make make things work. It's pretty extraordinary stuff. Um, so we'd come in here Again, and put on this uh, this chin. Uh, again, we'd come over here. Um, I could check, you know, using a straight angle to make sure that I've got some symmetry going on here. Check the symmetry part of this. So, let's see where this is starting from. Make sure it's starting from the same place. Okay, pretty close. So, again, we can go ahead and we can go ahead and uh, make our our chin here. Now I'm drawing this on a flat surface, so again, this might have a little. It might be a little flatter, but that's all right. A little distorted. I mean, when I drew, when you draw flat, you're not supposed to draw flat, uh, and so uh, you got to be careful when you do, because if you do, you're going to end up with some really strange, just a little bit of distortion. So I'm, tr I'm, like, if my circle really wasn't a circle to begin with, I, I'm in a whole lot of trouble. But I don't think we're, I don't think we're so far off that it's, it's going to be nuts. But what happens is it'll make the the skull a little, a little more round because it's it's a little squat. Uh, 
So again, you know, we normally will draw on an angle so that we have the same angle view as, as what we're actually drawing. Usually this notch is a little softer. The, the skull I've got that I'm sort of looking at under the over at the corner of my eye has a little, little stronger notch. And again, if we have, you know, we're going to have, you know, the, the, uh, The, the, the teeth we're going to have again, uh, again, if you don't have your wisdom teeth, and most people these days do not, you're going to have seven teeth over here instead of eight teeth uh, on either side. You'll have seven instead of eight. So you should have 14. Wait, is that right? But yeah, you should have... Um, you should have seven on either side. Double check that. Now again, if the person had the, you know, if they have their wisdom teeth, well then, if they had all, you know, their four wisdom teeth, well then you have eight on either side. Sixteen up and sixteen down. Um, so we just indicated a little bit of teeth there. Uh, we're not gonna, we didn't come here to get too crazy with the teeth or do a rendering, just enough so that I can, you can get an idea of how you know of how you're going to deal with this with this uh, with this skull. Now there's actually a piece that actually comes back here, the uh, the cheekbone to the side, and attaches right here just in front of the of the ear. This is the you know where the ear goes, the hole for the ear. Um, now sometimes you can see a little bit of that ridge, some of that return, and sometimes you can't. It just depends on your view. So it would, but it would turn back on itself like so. Is what, is, is what happens when, when you're looking at that. Um, if you can't, if you don't have the right view, well then you this will actually lift up a little bit and you won't be able to see it because this is coming up and in front of that a little bit. And again, all, everyone's, is, everyone's cheekbone is slightly, uh, slightly different in terms of the, the basic shape of it as far as that goes. But, um, you know, I think you get the idea that, again, you're going to look at this and start to go, okay, hey, wait a minute. Again, I'm trying to bring straight lines across since I'm, I can't look through this. You know, you can turn it upside down, and that's what I do a lot of when you're trying to, you know, get things to really look right. And I think I move this out a little bit. It might actually be a little too far out. Uh, I think I need to come back. Yeah, let's go ahead and take that off because now the cheekbone's getting way too pronounced way too far outside the skull. Um, so again, we got a little bit of a S curve there and a little bit of a notch here and then a little coming in. Okay, so something about like that. So again, we're going to come into the, the, the uh, got the temporal bone here. Um, and if you start looking at the skull, you'll start to see, uh, sometimes you can pick up depending on how it's lit, you'll start to really see the front. There's a front and side, so there's the front part of the, of the, of the muzzle, and then you have the side of the muzzle. This being the side and this being the front, uh, because it's, it's curved, right? Um, but, uh, so there's an arc that you'll start to see that will start to kind of come through here and a little bit of, this, anyways, it, it, it's pretty subtle stuff. We're not going to get into all that. I'm just saying, look for those rhythms. Um, if, if I've got a, if I've got a, there's a, you know, a, truly a muzzle here. This this muzzle, if you look, again, you'll start to see sort of a slight curvature that's trying to show you again the front of the muzzle on that on that skull. So just just look for little rhythms. There's another rhythm that we're going to talk about right now where you have. The uh, the top uh, you have the the nasal bone and then it transitions into the glabella. Now the glabella is what we call the keystone shape. It it transitions onto the forehead. Um, so this is our nasal bone. Okay, so you have the nasal bone like so, and you'll get sort of a sort of like an hourglass shape that happens on, on the nasal bone. Uh, and then you have, you know, the, the nasal bone will go up 
and you have you'll look for, you'll see a rhythm of this coming up uh, and so this this comes down and then it goes into the the uh, the ocular cavity like so it comes down and before it falls into the ocular cavity and this goes upward that's the the glabella which is sort of a trapezoid shape but let's do with the eyes so the reason we start with that square is because the eyes again sometimes people just put them as circles but they're actually closer to squares they're actually just an angle here on that square an angle down an angle coming this way an angle down an angle over it's circular like but it's it's not a circle and so if we actually go and start to create so we have a line that comes up like so we have another slight angle coming down we have then another angle of it so it doesn't come all the way down to the end of this corner it, it transitions and changes before it hits so this is contained with inside this this square but this this is this is a lot easier to get the nuance of what's happening on the um, on this ocular cavity here so again some people will just put a circle on there and call it done and it's like uh nope <laughs> that's that's not quite it uh this, this now i'm gonna break outside here just a little bit and then this comes down and over okay so this right here so this comes over here and then this transitions down so there's these basic angles through this this eye cavity that we really want to this actually needs to be a little straighter because it's actually this is the most boxy sort of it's still rounded but it's the boxiest part is this one right here on this particular skull and this one right here this is actually fairly boxy in other words you can see the corner very clearly in fact there's almost like a little reverse c curve that really can accentuate this whereas this over here again is a little bit more curved oh this broke this broke outside of that one a little bit so let's go ahead and pull this back yeah that's better so this just went a little bit too far so we'll come down here like so and then up here like so and then again this is the this is the eye cavity okay so we'll just go ahead and by modifying this you see how once we get this modified it lifts away from that nose like before it's you're gonna swear like nope it's too close that can't be I've got this just square is too close to that nose and it's it's not it's just we have it I mean it is as a square but by the time we modify it it'll be just fine so this is actually that eye cavity okay for our skull and then um, once again now I just made this as a curve but there's actually this temple bone actually comes out uh, and then comes down onto the you know so it actually opens up there's a slight sort of little plane up here where this connects onto the head but it's a, it's a very soft rhythm but it does it projects and, and transitions from the it transitions from the skull it's kind of comes here and then this transitions off of there for this this temporal or the the temple bone and I actually have it too wide so yeah we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move this in this is too far out so like you know take a look at what I'm actually drawing we're gonna end up with something that's going to look about like that all right and then we've got the side of the head right here we've got this coming over here into the, the cheekbone again we're going to start to have something that's going to start to look skull like now again I could if I was drawing the skull I'd also be doing some measuring because again they might be like oh well this this one's this goes a little wider you know at the cheeks and this one no this one's a little thinner through the cheek and it's a little more of a stretched oval through the head you know different you know you want to you want to be aware of what it is that that are the particularities of, of what it is that you're drawing 
Uh, that's going to make your, your drawing much more interesting as far as this goes. You know, I've got this coming down through here. Right. Now, this is actually sort of, there's a thickness line that I was trying to indicate. I think that got a little too strong, so we're going to just soften that because it, it can't be as dark or as strong as the outside edge. That's just, that's, that's wrong. This is actually, there's a space in between here, so we're going to go ahead and fill that in because this is where this is hitting the teeth, right? It's actually the, the tooth bed, as people would call it, where this is, this is happening through here. Okay. Uh, this is also, there's a bit of a ridge as this is going back and, and tucking back in. Now, sometimes this actually will start to look like it's, there'll be a rhythm line that feels like it's connecting it to the outside, but that's just an overlap. So um, again, you'll, I'm going to shoot some photographs for those people that are in the class to keep it very clear what we're actually seeing on this thing. Um, and again, I'm, I'm this, a lot of this I'm just using sort of memory. Uh, I don't really have the skull set up. I have it sitting here beside me. I'm kind of glancing over, so I don't have the exact view, but this still feels just like it's a little bit too much. Uh, is this, there's again, there's sort of, there's a rhythm here that, that separates the front of the forehead from the side of the head. And so you have, again, sort of a rhythm line of this coming in through here. Um, I think that's a little bit too wide. I think this one's probably a little closer as far as that goes, you know, and this would be the, the side of that skull a little bit. And the side of the skull, usually it's actually a little bit wider here at the top. And then it, you know, it gets a little bit, comes in just a little bit. So again, we can start to deal with the fact that we've got, you know, we can still modify, modify the skull to make it look better. Uh, again, this is, and again, I'm just, this is, you know, again, the, the nasal cavities are actually quite fascinating on people. They're very, very different. Um, from person to person, uh, almost as much as anything else, more than anything else on the, on the, on the face. It's fairly interesting. And when we draw portraits, I talk about how people really neglect the nose far too much. And then there's the, there's the, the, the there's a nasal bone that divides the septum and things, the inside of the nose. I'm not going to worry about detailing this. Uh, you can, you can put as much information as, as you want, but this is going to be back in shadow. This is a cavity. So we're going to go ahead and darken the, the cavity there a little bit. This is going to be the side of the head right through here. You know, it starts to look like it has a bad comb over or something, but that's just it's supposed to be a rhythm line coming around here. Um, there's a, uh, there's a, a, a shape um, that, again, that this is sort of where the eyebrows are. Uh, that comes off of this and then it comes down and it this is the top of of the uh the glabella but you get this it almost seems reminiscent it's, it's where basically um I need to round this out but it's where you know where your eyeglasses will fit it's also kind of where the the eyebrow will be in this sort of this little indentation it's it, it's a soft rhythm so i don't want to get too dark but i want you to understand that this angle this is the glabella is actually at an angle coming back up onto the forehead, so it's at an angle like this, and especially on a good skull, and then the nasal bone is transitioning and projecting outward. So two very, very different angles. So the angle from you know between the nasal bone, which is here, and the glabella is, is, is coming up at an angle like this, and then this one's at a different angle coming out like that. Um, but it's 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 very interesting. You also, some, if you look, sometimes you'll get a soft, uh, again, sort of a soft reverse curve of the glabella wrapping around a round head, and then you'll get this little arc that's again an opposing angle above it. It's it's very fascinating. Again, these these reverse curves and these angles and and stuff that we get in the head. Again, this is a ridge line, so it can't be as dark as the outside contour. 
got to be careful of that. Um, this again is would have probably a cast shadow on it depending on the lighting. This is then a cavity, so we're going to go ahead and darken that. And again, we've got something that's going to start to look like a skull for us. Again, we're going to go ahead and modify this one. So we have, you know, this coming out here, going in to there, this then here. And again, we're just, I'm just doing this, you know, from memory and all this good stuff. But I've, I've drawn, a, 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 you know, two or three skulls, quite a few skulls. I, I'm, I'm just kidding when I say two or three. Uh, few hundred or whatever so I could I could pull off a decent skull if I had to and again we could start playing games most of your skulls for Halloween aren't skull like at all they're completely wrong for the you know the anatomy's all out of whack they're they're playing with the eye holes making them bigger making them stretching them making them look more sinister in different ways and and there's ways of doing that but what we're trying to do is actually deal with something that is there very skull like what what actually looks like you know a person's head underneath your the 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 this the bones underneath your skin if you will uh that's what that's what we're wanting to do we're not trying to turn this into some sort of you know skull for halloween or something like that uh, we're trying to keep it a little bit more close to what the skull actually is going to look like and its basic proportions and again the reason we're doing this is because we're gonna we're gonna transition into doing Portraits, the basic idea of portraits, and of course, portraits are nothing more than skin on top of this, on top of this skull. So that's why we we wanted to, we want to understand it because the portrait is all based on the the skull, the pr basic proportions, and some of the basic skeletal landmarks and all this sort of good stuff. We'll go ahead and again, we could go ahead and uh, put the nasal bone in there. You know, and we could put all, you know, and start to, if we want to, we start to put on some of the, you know, some more of the information here, you know, where this is going. You know, a little depression to the skull there, and right there, and, and another one over here, and so forth and so on. But, you know, we, we don't, we don't really, you know, that's, 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 little nuance again if we don't have the doesn't matter how cool we or how great we put on little little stuff like this if the eyes are in the right place it doesn't matter you know so again I don't want you to start thinking I mean I want you guys to try to draw as good a skull you can but first try to deal with the basic proportions that's what's gonna get us there not you know not, oh look I put a crack here doesn't that look more skull like ha 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 no that's not gonna matter uh, so first we're gonna try to make sure that we get the this is a little bit, a little bit too pointed, but mine's also a little bit too low on this opposite side. So we need to make sure that okay, make sure we're coming up here and giving that a nod, and then bringing this down here. Okay. And these are just subtle little things, subtle little rhythms. So I'm just trying to put just a little bit of tone on here, so we're we're uh, we're uh, we're aware of that rhythm. Now again, there's 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 the extreme side, but then there's where it climbs up the forehead, and then there's the front of the forehead. And a lot of times you'll still start to see sort of a, again another rhythm of the front, and so. so Sometimes, you know, we'll start staring at stuff and we'll go, what are we look? What is that? Well, this would be the true front of the forehead where it, it flattens out a bit. It's still, it's still round, but it rounds more on this side and this side. And then, of course, really goes, you know, changes angles as it, as it goes around the corner. But that's what this is. This right here is the very front. You're going to have to pull out the anatomy book, but I believe it's the frontalis. Uh... But we've got, you know, again, the front of the of the forehead. You know, after you've been, I, I don't, you know, I haven't been, I don't know, I can tell you how long it's been since I've been in college. Going through all the different names. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, every, 
every few years, every five years or so, I'll pull out the the uh, book just to refresh my memory. But I know what the I know the rhythms that I'm looking for. I just you know you, you forget the names. Um, it's just like you know if we don't have the fact that this is round through here, it won't matter. Again, how good we draw it, there is a there is a rounding of the uh, of the uh, again the muzzle, and there's the front of the muzzle here versus the side of the muzzle, and so that becomes very important. Sometimes you'll catch a little rhythm of this coming up and then transitioning back and, and kind of into the cheek. And sometimes people are like, "Well, what is what is that?" Again, we're just seeing a very subtle little you know nuances where we have the side of this versus the front and the side of this versus the you know just little stuff that's going to give it a little more information. Again, we're not completely worried about that at, at this point but there would be a point at which you'd be like yeah okay we went to uh you know a lot of times you'll see a little bit, bit of a sort of a trapezoid shape coming down here onto the through the chin uh you know look for that and again that's the front of the chin and then this is the side and that's the side so again very very interesting stuff as far as that goes um, very, very fun. And again, we can start getting into, you know, all the, some of the, the different, you know, holes in the skeleton, the processes and the different, you know, different little areas. And, and if we get into here, this is the flat part, but there's a ridge that comes out and then that projects down onto the, anyway, so you, you start to have all these little subtle, um, little planes that you start to see. As you start to study the skull, but again, we want at the very least we need that the we need the eyes and the and the uh, and the nose and things like that to be in the right place. Uh, again, we've got we're going to go ahead and put this over here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just try, I'm going to put this stuff over here. We'll come back in just a minute, finish this up. All right, welcome back. So here we are. <laughs> I just went ahead and tried to. Again, make this the same on, on the right side as it is on the left, uh, as far as that goes. And again, we've got the, we've got the eyes placed, we've got the nose, we've got the, you know, spaces between the bone here, space between the bone where it goes dark because it's a cavity. Um, we're going to go ahead and finish this off. Uh, but again, this is so. This is just a generic skull. Again, we we have to do, we define the hairline. Uh, I went ahead and stretched the skull a little bit, so I think my hairline is probably going to move up here a little bit too. And this is just to show you that again, these are just guidelines. So again, we've we've we start with the we came down one six on that. So we had original circle. This was one six. Then we have put uh, two six, which became our thirds. Okay, and then we added this distance again to the bottom of the chin. Remember that, and again, you can go ahead and, and, and watch this again. We um, went ahead and we marked from the center, from the side, divided this into fourths, divide that into fourths. Uh, came in one, uh, one fourth, and then this was we had equal spaces and then we came in just a little bit more. Uh, so again, this is this distance here should be about again three quarters of, of an of an ocular cavity space, all that good stuff. Uh, we said that the uh, again the distance of the eyes at the um, comes through about the halfway point of the nose, right? We divided from the bottom of the nose to the chin into fourths. This was the this is the you know the bone bed first fourth the teeth at the halfway now these bottom teeth are, are slanted back at an angle uh, back at an angle going back and so a lot of times if you're looking when we're looking at this these teeth will be uh, seem shorter because of foreshortening because they're going down at an angle and these teeth are going up at an angle so these look like they're stretching. And these look like they're getting smaller. So I, I did some of that because that's not uncommon. We usually see, you know, the skull from the top view. And then if we wanted to, you could go ahead and again finish out 
again, the teeth. Now, the biggest thing with the teeth we got to be careful with is that a lot of times when people do teeth, they, they draw the, the really dark lines uh, for all the teeth, and it starts to look really weird, you know, almost like they've lined their teeth with, you know, with silver or something like that. And so what you'll do instead is you'll uh, go ahead and look for the spacing between the teeth. So this is where the teeth meet the bone bed. And even with this, with a bone bed, we'll do a little bit of lost and found line work a little bit so it doesn't get too dark. Or again, it starts to look a little strange, a little bizarre. And we don't want the teeth to, again, catch too much attention. And then we'll do just, you never, and usually you'll leave a little space between, you know, instead of, again, going all the way through with a dark line, you'll sort of indicate it. So you'll, you'll, you'll come here through the bottom of the teeth, like so, and then maybe come up just a little bit, uh, a little darker here, a little bit lighter line as it comes through. And that will make the teeth look more, uh, it'll just indicate that, yeah, there's a line between these two. But it's it's much fainter and it'll it'll just feel better. Uh, it's called lost and found line. Artists will do it all the time uh, to make things you know to imply things without actually having to state it directly. So again, we come back through here and again make all these teeth. You also have sort of a ridge line that comes along these, and the ridge as the ridge line comes, it opens up a little bit at the front, and then it comes down. Again, so you'll have, again, sort of this irregular, and this is sort of the ridge just above the, you know, the, the bone, again, is coming down a bit of an angle, and then this comes down as it, as it wraps around. Again, this is, so it opens up. Again, if we look up here, this is where we can see, again, this angle, but as it, 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 that ridge comes down as it comes around. So it, it's very interesting, again, with these subtleties that you'll start to see. That starts to make that you get sort of a again a, this curve and then a, a reverse curve. Again, makes the skull look more like it's smiling. Again, that whole smile of you know smile of death, as, as, as some people have have coined that phrase. Um, so again, we have the bone bed down here, going around the teeth, at the bottom of the teeth as well. And again, you could go ahead and start to put in just a little bit of indications of, again, the spacings between the teeth. Try, to, try not to draw the full line. You know, just, it'll start to be too dark, and even some of those are, are maybe a little bit too strong. And so we get in here. I'm using you know, a very dark uh, pencil just so that we hopefully we can see the lines a little bit better on the, on the video and all that good stuff. But again, we could go ahead and just, you know, Finish, you know, finish doing the teeth and make the making the teeth look all fantabulous, phantasmagorical, if you will. And uh, again, that's a lot of times that's that's what we want on this stuff. And we got the canine over here. Okay, so again, we can just go ahead and finish these teeth out here. Like so. And we've got ourselves a skull, right? Make him look like he's happy, happy to be there. So, again, as we start to these start to come around, just start to see sort of a a bulge come down on the side as, it, as it's wrapping around. That's not uh, uncommon at all. So if you're like, oh, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Probably. Uh, So again, we can just go ahead and finish those teeth out very quickly. And we have a basic, a basic skull. We can start to clean this up a little bit. 
And normally we do these lines very, very lightly, very gently, so we can erase them and, and no one will know how we did it. Uh, this cheekbone's still a little asymmetrical right to left. So I, I you know, I, I might want to, you know, go ahead and make sure that I, I deal with that part of the, you know, the skull. But again, I'm not doing a particular skull. If you were looking at a skull, you can, a little easier there to, to deal with, you know, getting the nuances just right. Or if I was doing my own skull, again, we're doing a Halloween skull, we could do all kinds of stuff, make the, a little more of a sinister grin curve through here, uh, turn these eye sockets so they seem to be angling down a little more sinister through there. You know, we bring the, bring the, you know, the different plates through the, the skull and a little bit more of the ridges and just rough it up. But we're, again, we're not doing that. We're doing this for, uh, what's the skull actually looks like. So again, uh, we used thirds here, even thirds. Uh, we then divided, we, we used fourths here and fourths here to then divide this. We took from the nose to the chin, divided that into fourths. Again, the, usually the, the, this tooth line is usually about halfway between the chin and the nose. Again, we used the halfway point for, for the eyes. Uh, the, the cheek is almost in line with the bottom of the nose line, different stuff like that. We talked a little bit about some rhythms like this uh, you know, these little rhythms through here, um, on this, on the skull, we do the rhythms really lightly. There's also, again, the, the, the front, front, front part of the forehead, you know, sometimes you'll start to see an arc through there and it actually comes down and kind of comes down and through the, the touching the nasal bone. And then we've got, so this is the true front and then this comes down, down the, the mountain a little bit more and then it really turns the side. And, and gets darker there. And it's the same thing with the cheek. The cheek starts to turn the corner right about through here. So this would be start to become the side of the face as this is the front of the face. And then, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll have where, again, you'll start to get a little bit of the flat and, and climbing up, you know, up and behind the nasal bone. There'll be a, a little rhythm of this coming up and through and into there. And then again, this is the the side of the of the cheek coming up, and then you know, part of the the temporalis is turning. Part of it's in front, part of it starts to go back. Just little nuances like this are going to really start to help the skull. Same thing with this is going back and down, so this starts to you know get a little bit of value on it. Right, this is the front part. This is going down at an angle, so it's getting darker. Then this juts out, and then this turns. So as this turns, it's going to be getting darker as it goes this onto the side of the head. Just little nuances like that are going to really help. Our, our, you know, and make it feel more like a skull. There's going to be uh, a lot of times there's, there's a cast shadow down onto here, so this cast shadow will push back that little bit of the jaw. So a little, you know, again, we're gonna, I'm gonna send you one that has shadows on it so you can deal with some depth. But very quickly, you know, you can start to create, again, the feeling of, of some of this depth. Um, and again, if I was drawing a particular skull, I would double check some of my measurements. To me, it looks like I, I brought this, I brought this nose down a little too low. I should have probably kept it up here and pushed this way and pushed the eyes a little bit that way, but that's all right. Again, that's in hindsight, you know, hindsight is 2020. So again, we can stretch this. We can stretch a little bit this way and a little bit this way. Again, this is just a guide, and it still looks skull-like, but it, it, it's more of a. This is more of a round skull. If I wanted it to be a little bit more, you know, like a taller than it is wide skull, I would have stretched it this way. Is this wrong? No. It just made it into a different skull than, than what I was thinking of doing. Uh, and so again, don't. Don't be afraid to. To ch you know to check and and to double check and to, and to see what's happening. Now some people up here at the top, the very top of the skull, they'll have a very slight uh, bulge up there. The plates, where the plates come together, it'll get a little, just a little bit of, 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 a, of a rise through there. Um, and you can look for that. We didn't, I didn't really worry about that for this one, but again, it's something that can, that adds to the feeling that it feels more skull-like. 
Uh, again, this would have a light value over here, just very, very, very light. Um, again, this would be, as this turns the corner, this would be going into shadow. As This is, again, the side of the head. You know, again, you go, what's the, what's the front of the head? And you could go ahead and get the front of the head on there and the projection of the, of the nasal uh, bone, which hopefully this has a little more contrast to project this forward. You could have, okay, well, there's going to be a little bit of value over here, um, just a tiny bit over here. And then the front's going to be, you know, the lightest part. And then as this goes around the corner, it's going to be getting darker and so forth and so on. So we're going to still put value on this thing. And again, I'll, I'll send you one that's got a light source that has shadows on it and stuff. But this is a good way to, to break down the drawing a skull from the front. And this has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. And I hope you guys will take this and, and be more creative with it. And and uh, you know hopefully have an easier time drawing the, the human skull. You guys take care now. Have a good day. Bye-bye.